Mike Baum here with Christoph Shinsky, UFC veteran and now KSW commentator. Christoph, this is an exciting new gig for you. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, Martin and I have been been talking about doing things since uh, retirement all the way back from UFC. Uh, we always wanted to have my, I've always wanted to have my last fight in Poland. And we were even talking once I, my retirement from the UFC happened, we were thinking about maybe possibly doing one last fight. And uh, unfortunately, with the injuries and stuff I've sustained over my career, just wasn't able to happen. So I did a camp for KSW before. And over the last little while, we've been talking about doing something. And then this opportunity came up as being one of the color commentators. And, you know, I jumped at the chance. And, uh, yeah, we're slowly getting there. So my, I believe it's my fifth show now. And, you know, getting embedded, getting embedded and better at this and just having fun and enjoying the process. Yeah, what's been the most challenging aspect of it, do you think, or something that you know, you've maybe didn't, weren't expecting when you came on that's kind of popped up or things like that? Um, you know what? I think it's more about just the technical terms of the moves and things like that. You know, I've been away from the sport for such a long time. It's been, what, 10 years now and things like that. And, you know, I mean, I haven't done any anything like this in a very, very long time. So just get, getting adjusted with the technology, tech, tech, technical terms for, for each position and things like that. But I'm very fortunate to be working with uh, Will and Chris. Uh, Chris is the technical guy, you know, I, I got uh, Will as the the energy guy, and I'm kind of like the the guy who kind of gives you the, the the inside scoop of what a fighter feels like during the situation. So uh, so we work really well together, and I'm very happy with so far how it's going and just, you know, progressing and progressing and getting better and better with this. Yeah, and some of the guys that I talk to, when I kind of say that's like enhanced their mind so much in terms of like being a fighter, does any part of you wish, you know, maybe this was something that came up during your fighting career, and do you think the knowledge of maybe having to study all these athletes and the different elements, strategy, and those kind of things would maybe have impacted your fighting career, maybe either positively or negatively? Yeah, definitely. You know, I mean, it would it would have been fun to, to do this kind of stuff way back, but those are the last things you think about. You know, I mean, you never think about plan B. What's what's next? You know, I I was I've been, I've been kind of fortunate enough to, that I had a plan plan B idea of what I wanted to do after this, and then this is like plan C now. So it, it's it's fun, but yeah, definitely it would have been fun to kind of have your hand in this uh, during your fight career or, or even close to being the end of the fight career to kind of enhance all these things and get to know about these fighters and get to know all these little things, which, uh, which would have been a lot of fun. Yeah, and in my opinion, KSW is the most underrated organization in the world. I mean, I don't think, generally speaking, they get enough credit for from a, like the production they put on, the fighters that they have, all those kind of things. Um, can you just tell me a little bit about what it's like working with them? And do you kind of feel the same way that maybe from like the greater scheme of fans or media or whomever, they maybe don't get the proper due? Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. Um, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough to kind of have been with them for a little while and, and I've watched them grow from, from a quite a, quite a long time ago. And uh, it is it is amazing to see the production value that they put into it. Uh, kind of got that pride feel uh, for way back from Japan days, and and then just the, the quality of the fights, you know, the level of MMA in Poland has grown so much. The level of MMA overall in the world has grown so much, but but in Europe specifically, with just the level of BJJ, the grappling and then the striking has grown so much that it's fun to watch these young guys coming up. And now more and more so, they're using a lot more international fighters in their leagues and stuff like that. We're just trying to get them out to the to the English speaking audience because that's what's the missing link is in Poland they're they're massive they're huge slowly expanding to you know have their shows in Croatia have their shows in England and things like that we want to get them into the western side of the world and then show the westerners what this my apologies so sorry you're good uh my apologies. Uh, so just showing the West of the world what KSW is all about, that they are one of the premier leagues in uh, one of the premier fight leagues in the world and uh, probably in the top, you know, two or three in the world for sure. And from this card, is there any one fighter, one fight that really people need to 100 percent tune in or is getting you very excited to call? Um, you know what? The whole card is pretty much stacked, man. I love it. The fact that, you know, you got a weightlifting Olympic, you know, bronze medalist and silver medalist, you know, fighting it out. And uh, you have uh, a Torres, who's a Brazilian world champion and things like that. Uh, uh, I, one of my fighters, actually, I started uh, I started uh, managing uh, fighters through MTK MMA and uh, he's he's fighting Pavel Politilo. So I'm very excited about that. I'm actually going to be in this corner this 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 night. So I get the chance to do a little bit of both, get the chance to be a corner man and 
a color commentator after. So just super excited for the night. I can't wait for Saturday. Interesting. So when did you kind of move into the, the management side a little bit? Is that something new or have you been doing that a, a bunch post-retirement? No, just just started recently, actually. Um, I was approached by, uh, so MTK, uh, MTK MMA kind of started recently. Uh, they have their office in Dubai. And uh, one of my friends, Collar Keller, is actually running MTK, uh, MTK MMA. And he asked me to be the representative for Polish uh, MTK MMA representative. And uh, I, I said, absolutely. I am so sorry I keep doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And um, I said yes to the opportunity of jumping at the chance of starting managing fighters. And I started kind of looking around to see who's looking for a manager, um, some of these younger guys who are up and coming and things like that. And Pablo Politilo was available. He messaged me and I messaged him. We connected and slowly kind of building the, the, the new brand of uh, Polish uh, uh, fighters for MTK MMA. Amazing. And what else have you been getting up to post retirement? I know, it's been, <laughs> as you said, it's almost been like 10 years since you fought. And I, I do yeah, want yeah. to get into uh, the stuff. I know you had a tweet to Dana White and Jeff Nowitzki recently, which I assume was maybe on the fall <laughs> of the Spencer Fisher story. Yeah, definitely. Um, um, you know what? I'm, I'm dabbing my hands into a lot of things. So I started music production. So I, my first song actually just came out yesterday on Spotify and iTunes and things like that. I'm, I'm looking so forward to very close to being signed by a label, which is, which is amazing. I'm, I'm a huge drum and bass fan. So drum and bass music is my, is my genre. So I started producing. I have a, I have an amazing instructor from, uh, from the UK who's helping me grow and develop and just develop my skills. And so that's kind of like a side project that I do. Um, so I'm, I've been living in Dubai now for the, this is my fourth year in Dubai. Dubai. Um, I'm starting up this year my own little fitness studio, boutique studio style fitness MMA training center where it's more about using MMA for fitness and things like that. So I'm working on that. Just, you know, just, just living an amazing life uh, post career. Don't get me wrong, the, the knees the knees are uh, pretty bad and, you know, the, the mind and stuff like that is very strong still. So I'm very happy with uh, that. I don't have any of these crazy symptoms that a lot of these guys are having. Uh, I have been, I have been, you know, working a lot with a lot of doctors and, and and, and, and people who are in that field to help me regenerate, you know, all the tissues and connective tissues and stuff like that with my brain. So I'm very happy with all the peptides and things like that that I'm taking and the supplements and things like that. So I'm not dealing with any of these major issues that some of these fighters are getting. Plus, I feel like I've left at the right time. You know, my brain told me, stop fighting. My family told me it was time to fight, to stop fighting. And I, and, I, and I said, yes, it's time to stop fighting. So very fortunate to stop at the right time and, uh, and you know, continue on living an amazing life. I'm 43 years old and I feel like I'm just life really chapter twos which is what my uh, my music name is uh it's like star set of a chapter two a brand new journey and, and i'm having a blast doing it i'm really glad to hear that so you mentioned yeah, there was some thoughts maybe about doing like another fight at some point down the line whether it was ksw or elsewhere um was that something that you grappled with for a while post-retirement like the i want to maybe do one more or the kind of allure of getting back in there at some point yeah, you know, what happened was, um, you know, after my very last fight in 2011, I, I was scheduled to fight one more time. I wanted to have my 10th fight in the UFC. You know, I mean, you have those those certain goals that you have. And my goal was first was to make it to the UFC. You know, I mean, I, like I said, I started, started my career at 25 years old. I picked up my first class of any kind of mixed martial arts was 25. By the time I'm 31, I make it to the UFC. I stay there for three, four years fighting. I had nine fights, six and three. I wanted to have that 10th fight. You know I mean? I, I really wanted it. But unfortunately, um, after the way I got knocked out and I took, took a few extra shots to the head when I was knocked out, it just my brain and my body just were not feeling it. So I, I messaged Dana White and he messaged me back, told me, hey, we're going to retire you and things like that. And I, that's not the way anybody wants to go out. You know I mean? Nobody wants to go out with a, with a loss and a TKO loss and oh, sorry, a knockout loss and things like that and be told that you can't finish your career the way you want to. So I definitely thought about, you know, talk with KSW and Martin and possibly doing something here. But when I, when I got back into training and I started sp doing very light technical sparring with very, very small light heavyweights, you know, uh, lightweights and light heavyweights and just, just the small guys just playing around and stuff like that. And every time they touched me in the chin, just my mind and my brain just didn't like the way it felt. You know, I, mean, I used to be a guy that used to be like touched and, and I had no issues with that kind of stuff. And then all of a sudden now, you know, your brain is like telling you, man, this doesn't feel good anymore. It's something's off. It just, it just wasn't making sense. So it was the right time for me to stop. Unfortunately, not the way I wanted to go out, but uh, I was, I was smart for it. And I'm forever grateful for making that decision. And uh, yeah, just like I said, working on some future things that are, that are going to be freaking amazing. That's great to hear. So I know you had 
that tweet to Dana and Jeff kind of mentioning, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. micro dosing and things like that. Do you think mm -hmm. for guys that maybe, you know, do you have it worse than you with Spencer Fisher, which I think we were all kind of heartbroken to, to read all that stuff mm -hmm. that came out on him. Do you think that's a, an avenue to maybe leading to a better life for the people who do have it, that the worst coming out of this game? Yeah, definitely. You know, already over the last, uh, I believe about six months or so, I've been, I've been, I've been trying out some like brain peptides, Cortexin. Uh, there's a few other ones from Russia that I've been, that I've been uh, handed and tried out for. And, and they're actually making me feel absolutely amazing. You know I mean? I, I feel like I want to, you know, educate myself and learn more. And I feel like like just my brain just kind of waking up and, and, and just, just absorbing information and things like that. I'm, uh, I'm no longer like feeling lazy or anything like that. I just just want to go, go, go and get up and do things. On top of that, I have been self, you know, doing some self um, LSD microdosing and then microdosing some um, psilocybin mushrooms and things like that on, on, on a very, very small scale. I've been doing that for quite a while. And uh, and to be honest with you, um, I even just had my first ayahuasca experience and and, and all those things are, are absolutely amazing. And you, you may definitely make you see the world in a, in a different way. Uh, very small, small, minicule differences, but you feel happier, you feel more energized, you feel like you want to get up and do things. Um, you feel, you feel you've, you know, I feel like you feel normal and, and beautiful at the same time. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's definitely the future. And I'm very happy that UFC and Jeff are looking into this and and hopefully um, and you hear a lot of you know studies and things like that with 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 guys who've been in the military and had some post post-traumatic stress disorder and things like that and those kind of things are really helping and, and I truly believe that and, uh, and I'm hoping that um, many others will, will go that line and then attempt to to try these things and hopefully it will help them um, get to the level that they want to be at uh, once their fighting career is over. Yeah, do you think there's anything, you know, whether it's a UFC, a Bellator, or a KSW or anything, can they do, do more to be the nature of the beast and hopefully this develops to a point and they get enough knowledge and information on you know, the things you were kind of talking about that it can be a kind of a safety net coming out of it? You know what I think what you just said for right now is the key, you know, it's just knowledge. It's just understanding what, what it is and, and that, it, it, you know, everybody's saying, oh, drugs are your career. I mean, it's kind of funny every time I like I do podcasts and things like, things, like, things like that in Poland and Polish language and I always get asked, why are you taking drugs? Are you taking drugs? I don't look at this as drugs. I look at this as medicine. And uh, and I do believe that if people get educated, if, if UFC takes their time and, and other organizations take their time to get educated, and understand how how this stuff works, and, and it can be really helpful. Um, um, they definitely do the right thing, and and we will see a lot more of you know these guys who are having some serious trouble actually come out of this in a, in a positive way and a positive light, and uh, can be really helpful to them and to whoever else that needs it. Not just us, not just I'm talking about fighting, but just anybody for that matter who who has having some some major stresses in their life who's been going through some major issues who's had who's had some some things like that it's definitely going to help yeah and i recall watching the real sports segment i don't know if you've seen that episode with uh you know all the stuff with dean lister and ian paul and uh there's some hockey players that were really struggling and it seems like the ayahuasca and all those experience were just absolutely yeah changing for them and it's remarkable even just like the speech pre and post that experience it's just amazing what it can do yeah no absolutely like my Alaska experience was one of the most beautiful experiences i've ever had in my life it was it was completely life-changing you know what i mean you you it's it's hard to even explain what you see what you feel what you hear what um, what we would call grandmother what grandmother shows you and 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 it's it's uh it was literally by one of the most amazing experiences of my life and altering life-changing and i've looked at the world completely differently since that time in a, in a very kind positive uh beautiful happy way uh, it, it's just amazing and I, i've said this even after my my ayahuasca experience that i believe every human on the planet who's open-minded and 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 is willing to you know take in what what this gives you should be doing this at least one time in their life because it will show them the world in a very very different way and in a very positive way especially now during the time where where this world is in a, such a negative state so much negativity everywhere and with the covid and everything like that it's it's man i'm i'm, I'm a completely different human from my from my, i've always been a very positive human but but this especially these last three months i've just been tremendous in my head and just just full of changing all this negativity into a positive state of mind is, is just been incredible that's amazing. And two last things and switching gears a little bit. I know, uh, you know your nickname, the Polish Experiment, you represent Poland and everything, but you also represent Canada a lot through your career. I'm a Canadian myself from Toronto. So um, 
I'm wondering what you think of the state of those two countries with MMA. Obviously, you know, Jan Blachowicz in Poland, killing it, UFC champion. They had Ioanni on Jacek. Seems like great things there. Canada, you know, as you're in the UFC, that was like EFT prime time as well. And it's definitely, in my opinion, fell off a little bit. I know there's been struggles for guys to get fights in, uh, in that country and stuff like that. Where do you kind of think the, those two are right now in terms of MMA and going forward? You know, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny how, like, where MMA kind of started, you know, your Brazil and then the United States and then and, and Japan and then, you know, Canada and all that stuff. And then slowly now you see, like, the other countries are catching up and slowly taking over and, and growing. So I love that. I love how that because everything's kind of coming for a circle. You know, eventually you'll see it'll go back to, to you know, Brazil and the States and you'll get those new champions coming through again and all that stuff. So it's been really fun. But, yeah, I'm, ah, my God, my hands are so bad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> No my, uh, um, uh, yeah, my, my, the Polish team here. I, actually, today I was I was just on a treadmill and I was watching Jan Blachowicz and Omel Anchuk and, and and a bunch of these KSW fighters training today, and then some of the greatest, you know, some of the best Polish athletes they have, and watching their grappling uh, practice. And I'm like, man, this is just amazing to watch the skill level that they have. What where where MMA was and where it is now is is truly amazing. So big props to the to the to the Polish fighters and to the Polish coaches just growing and stuff like that. And and like like you said too. You kind of see that the Canadian side and the American side has kind of slowly dropped off from from from, from that world. Uh, but I have a feeling though those guys will definitely catch up. I think you know guys like you know GSP when once he gets back into being you know even he I, I strongly believe that he's such an athlete that him as a coach would be tremendous for the sport of MMA. So I would love to see GSP you know one day you know being in a corner of someone and coaching them from from ground up all the way through to being a champion. And I think that can happen for sure. Yeah, that would be amazing. Awesome, man. Well, this was so great to catch up with you. I was really excited when they reached out with this opportunity. Uh, we spoke you know, way back in the day, and it's really cool to kind yeah. of see everything you've been through and where you are now, and obviously still in the game calling these fights. So best of luck with the, the broadcast coming up, and we hope to see you on many, many more with KSW in the future. No, thank you so much. Much love to you guys. Much respect. Thank you so much for having me. I miss you guys all the best, and I'll see you guys very soon.